they would have done it. Obviously, the same stakes on the line in this game as the grand finals of the league. Yeah, Andrew. absolutely. And Baraccia uh, will deny his own observance. Gladiators. Everybody wants the easy gold, so they're going to fight it out. Ooh. Gets the 100 gold. Look at that. They, easy money. Yeah, they should increase his salary. Seconds to after winning his, <laughs> winning the major and also getting this D ward. Very two equivalent things right there. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Definitely up the salary and uh, get it going. So Tofu coming over. I, I always just love it. Celery Tofu makes me hungry for some good Dota. Absolutely. And this is going to be a good Dota. Looking at the <laughs> Nisha's item build coming up from the mid lane, I believe that's going to be a straight up Meteor Hammer, the something that, uh, you know, Reddit talked about, and uh, I fiend Reddit a lot. So I get the <laughs> I get the ideas from Reddit. That's why we're on the same page. So it, it's a good setup. Like, you have Tornado to set things up. Uh, it also gives Invoker a bit more tower push, uh, which he doesn't have unless he's going the Exhort. Get the summons. Celery is onto something. Yeah, he, yeah, that's why I said that it. That one was 101. I mean, that's even more gold. Chef's kiss right there. Get two D wards before the one minute mark. No. And then a quick late good luck have fun. After that. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be they're gonna need some luck because they they just gave 200 gold to Rubik. Yeah, you go straight axe. And you have please. and you also have no observer whatsoever. Look at Celery, man. He's bringing another sentry, just able to <laughs> get stuff done. Block his big camp or unblock his small camp. For now, it's just going to be a big camp block. Thorn in the side of Liquid already. Uh, you're talking about Nisha going for the Meteor Hammer. That channel time, obviously, a little bit lower. Uh, actually, a lot lower. Yeah, maybe I, I'm underplaying it a little bit. 2.5 to 2 seconds is uh, it's a, a lot big quicker. upgrade. Yeah, for sure. It, it's... <laughs> Uh, let's see how it's gonna go. This is gonna be Quinn on his signature puck, something that he's been carrying the games pretty much, and he's been dominating the matchups. He's been really on point. I remember maybe one or two games throughout the majors, at least, that I've seen, and I've seen a lot where Quinn like, lost lost the matchup, but, but it comes down to also rotation. Peace. Peace might die. Group Storm doing some damage on Insania, but first blood for the Dazzle. Does it even get traded now? Tofu on the run. They're looking for a second kill, but he'll just survive with 70 health. Not enough. He did have six magic stick charges and the fairy fire, but uh, did not want to commit. Uh, great start. Like, Dead Prophet, when you managed to shut her down, and who was the one getting the kill? Insania. Insania. Okay, give it. Like, you talked about other position five, trying to get some carry items. Uh, it might be Insania this time around. A lot of value, something that the D Governor talked about on the panel is Dazzle Shard. Like, sometimes it's not necessarily you want to give your position five the best start, but when it comes down to certain matchups, it's going to be quite a lot. And we see Boxy coming, going behind enemy lines. Yeah, this is rough. I mean, this is just straight in their lane in between the Tier 1 and the Tier 2 tower. I mean, this is giving me a little bit of uh, flashbacks to when you had the double scout axe builds. You just stand behind the tower and farm creeps just freely like that. Bring poor man shield back and side shop. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there for the side shop for sure. Let's see uh, some new businesses get made in this map. It's uh, going back to what you said about Ace getting shut down a little bit here with that first death. You kind of... The Death Prophet lineups are based on just like solely taking objectives off that six. When you get the level two in the uh, Exorcism, you're going towards Roach. Like, if you slow him down, what does that do to the pace of Gaming Gladiator's lineup? Can they rebound off that? Is there anybody else who can kind of help him maybe get that? Yeah, they game? do have very active mid laner. Boxy will deny himself uh, in the meantime, but they do have Puck who can easily rotate. So, Dead Prophet, even with the nerves that take the tangos, this top okay. lane is a lot of burst. Ludraccio is actually the one who takes a lot of damage from Zai and almost gets run down by Boxy. Both these heroes sitting low. Zai, the Illusions, trying to get the damage. And and will eventually succeed. You get a visage in the top lane, and bottom there's a fight once again. Insania low health goes and falls. Insania drops into the trade. That will be a one for one over bottom. Too much work. Here we go. He does it. It's a lot of work. You know, I already said it. Telekinesis throwing him back. Lands on Zai. The chase is on for Celery. Goes through those trees and just trying to get the damage out of the tier one tower. That will be done with the soul assumption coming in from Zai. A couple of leaps, but then it gets uh, kind of boring. The first rotation from Tofu. Gotta make stuff happen. DD, gotta the get this belt. 
Yeah, good tornado to stop that. Tofu's still moving forward, and well, Quinn's gonna drop down that dream coil. They've got Boxy coming over from the side. Oh, the the trample, the damage on a Quinn! It's more than enough with Insidia coming in to get that kill onto the pop. Goes in a little bit too far in that level two in the Shadow Wave. Blows him up. Also getting Boxy, man. He's <laughs> a Boxy, Boxy's done so. Uh, Quinn getting that kill on Insania. Meanwhile, up top, Boxy getting a kill on a Celery. They're also looking at Duraccio once again. He is not safe in this jungle Dyer's at all. He's going for the drums. Like maybe there's a boot to pairing in the future. Boxy with the bleeding rift. Through through the side. Maybe trying to throw it at an avalanche. Maybe the juice coil on the two. The pulverize with the damage is in. They got the on a Boxy. The meteor hammer lands on the tofu. From the other side, size coming in. Soul assumption hits on the tofu. They've got the guardian greaves, which are immediately popped by Ace. Losing to thrown over by Insania as well as a tornado that comes in and lands. Uh, too much of anything. Yeah, that Radiance top tower. Guardian is coming in and turning the tides like that one. Putting in a little bit more damage up towards top. They do end up Dyer's fighting. Tornado avoided. Quinn still has that double damage. Top lane, they are going to go in. They've got the toss. It's on to Zai. Look to get the kill, but they've got the shallow grave. So Zai's going to survive a little bit longer and be able to TP out. They'll go after Insania. The chase is on from Ace. One charges. He's going to be probably okay. Shadow Wave. Sense that something is off. Roger going to go behind the 2 1 tower against the Insania with Lady Rift. That's a quick slow up of Insania. They're team coming from Nisha with a tornado landing on an Ace Radiant as well as Duraccio. But they go to the Exorcism, and maybe this is the one that finally nets them a tower. And that like they're gonna grab it but boxy may be setting up for some sort of onslaught combo they do middle tower has fallen die up top so Dyer's top exactly what they would go attack. for but they are just posturing like they may go i will say it's a little bit surprising considering the fact that the map more gaming gladiators was Dyer's top tower so shrunken rank shrunk uh, i'm not really sure but uh early on with the tier one towers going down they're able to get such a lead like that yeah. Uh, game gladiators are all over the place pretty much. Uh, these couple of rotations that look good for Team Liquid, uh, they did do the towers, but uh, it comes down to also Terrorblade wanting to farm a really big item. Now that the Radiance is complete, Team Liquid, they're gonna strike. They're gonna go inside the Roche pit, use this information that there is no exo available, and they will take it. I don't see Naga Siren being close enough to use Song. Wow. Yeah. Just kind of for free, and... It happens quicker, but they, they still need to learn to count. Oh, they have to, like, we learn how to count. Yeah. That's got to be a huge issue. Avalanche toss up into the air on the Zai with the Crypt Swarm coming in. Zai taking a lot of damage on the run. Bring it over to Mikke, who uses that Sunder to put him back to full health. But now the Song of the Siren right on top of the Terror Blade. There's three heroes Radiant here that are hit by the baby. Song. Radiant enough, doesn't really look like it. The Shallow Grave is on to make a very early Dream Coil down onto Xavier. They'll get the drop off the dash, but they'll lose the Aegis here on Terribly to start. Terribly was placed on a win, but he doesn't quite care. They're gonna go again with the Onslaught coming in for Boxy. That hurts the Terribly, and an Avalanche Toss comes in. They get the kill on Boxy and make it. Telekinesis lands on Anisha. He's trying to get out, but the Soul of Pulverize lifts him up into the air, and they'll get the kill on the Invoker as well. Even the Oh boy. See this respawn? But you're also fighting into Naga Siren Illusion, but they are way too tanky. He does have part of the wrath that we talked about. Avalanche oh. Toss, they've got the Siphon onto this Primal Beast. Now they get a few fans that are out there. I'm just kidding, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, are you sure? He's gonna be the one getting caught. Yeah, Silence on him, gonna thrown in by Ace. Override still on a Celery. They'll get the Telekinesis to the air. The Shallow Grave, but is he gonna be enough to save this invoker? It's not looking likely. They go to the song, they've got the Crypt Swarm. Nice. That lands more. on to Nisha. They'll get the kill with the Invoker out of the fight. This is looking bad for the to go in and look to get the kill to the Primal Beast. They'll take out Boxy, the Illusory Orb, hitting out of one of these heroes inside. They're not going to jump forward. They still want to go blink Avalanche on the two. Toss up in the air. It's on an AK. And they get the kill here on the Terrible. He gets the Sunder off. Side just the speed. Oh, the Illusion. Out of health, but they've got the damage. Another Shallow Grave. It's not really going to help out Mickey. He's inevitably dead in this fight, and he'll finally fall. They still want Zai. They still want this Visage. And Quinn's going to go in and finish him off if they, they get the kill on Insania. They've got the Crimson Swarm. They'll have the finishing 
Whoa, and a full team wipe here for Gaming Gladiators. Hey, it just, you know, you talk about how much damage he's doing with the radius, but Mickey is a sacrifice back to the zero almost immediately. They go to the shallow grave, but they've got the telekinesis as well as the sidelines, and with no PKB, that's going to mean another death here for this invoker. They'll even go to the exorcism to try and chase Zion, put that damage out on him. They have the ensnare that lands for Durashio. They also got to go into Boxy. That's Quinn off to the side, getting a kill on his support. Well, they'll take care of this visage and get themselves three. What up? There's the hey, enemy carry if he already used the Sunder. Uh, the cast is going to pretty well, too. Okay, let's see if he's all right. Onslaught in, Telekinesis up in the air. They've got the Sunder. That'll put Boxy down to half health. Boccio trying to chase. Just landing on a Boxy, but they've got the Deafening Blast. That pushes back this Death Drop in. Boccio still looking to get this kill, but eventually it will be Quinn. And look at the right side on Zai, who silence up and on the run with PKBB. Hot by Ace, though. He's running in. With the help of his team, he should be able to sustain and get through this and maybe get the kill here, but the Shadow Grave comes out from Insania. They go to the song. It's on the four remaining heroes on the side of Liquid. Oh, no, that's going to be huge. <laughs> Big fight, they're asking for help, but they're not gonna find it! Avalanche Toss comes in with the Uzi Orbiting, they go to the Sunder, it's gonna be under Raja, but are they able to get the kill here, at least on the Nine Siren? There's a Sun Strike coming in, but it's not gonna be enough just yet. Tornado comes through, Lanzo no couple of here, Raja getting ball, but still outliving Mickey. Terrible drops, Queen gets the kill, the Onslaught in, and gets a couple of these heroes and pushes them away, they get the Shadow Grave once again. Looking bad for Boxy. As he's been boxed in by the side of Gaming Gladiators. So get another kill. The call GG. And Gaming Gladiators will take game one and continue to reign supreme over Team Liquid. They just have their number, it seems. The, the way they've been playing the map. Like the they've, they've been making the moves around the map, both for these early towers, but the Gaming Gladiators, they got the most out of the map.